This is Dr. David Kreller of the Department of Chemistry of Georgia Southern University here with another chemistry video tutorial. This one about covalent bonding. And in particular, in this short video, we're going to talk about how covalent bonds are described by the three parameters, bond energy, bond order, and bond length. So we're going to define each of these variables and then discuss the way these three variables are interrelated. So let's first define bond order. It's a fairly simple concept, really. It's usually just an integer. It's either 1, 2, or 3, etc., which talks about the number of chemical bonds or shared electron pairs that exist between a pair of atoms. Typically, it's an integer, like I said, but half integer bond orders are not unusual. And you will often run into half integer bond orders if you explore molecular orbital or MO theory and use MO theory to discuss certain special chemical species such as radical species or excited state species or ions. So that's bond order, simply the number of chemical bonds. So we're going to use this slide which features this graphic to define both bond energy and bond length. What we're looking at here is a graph of the potential energy of a pair of atoms that are bonding with one another as a function of their separation, or you could just say how far apart they are. On the horizontal axis, you have their, the distance between the nuclei. The farther out on this graph you are, the farther apart are those atoms. So here's a depiction of those atoms. As you move this way towards smaller internuclear separation, they're getting closer together. And actually, because they're, they're bonding, they are becoming more stable as they become closer. So you can see the, their potential energy decreasing as they get closer. But however, there's a limit to how stable they will be. They won't come together infinitely closely because there's other forces that are important, other factors that control the overall potential energy. There are also repulsive interactions within the molecule. The nuclei, which are both positively charged, will repel each other because of the like charges. Similarly, the electrons are all negatively charged, the same, and they will repel each other, a repulsion that gets stronger if you try to bring those electrons too close together. Based on the electron rep electron repulsion, the nuclear, nuclear, nuclear repulsion, if you try to bring those atoms too close together, they will become unstable as those other repulsions become more important. Here's the definition of bond energy and bond length. Bond energy is the amount of energy that you would have to provide to the molecule to disrupt that bond, say to take them from their minimum in potential energy and totally break them apart and to separate them again. So the bond energy is a positive number. It's the amount of energy you have to provide to break that bond. Bond length, this other parameter, is defined as that special internuclear separation where the minimum energy is found. Now the molecule will exist on average at this bond length. However, you can never really take all the energy out of a chemical system. Those atoms, even though they are bonded to one another and really will come together like this, those atoms are not totally devoid of, of energy. And if they have a little bit of excess energy, but not enough energy to break the bond, they may sort of vibrate. They will stretch apart a little bit and then turn around and come back together, basically undergo what's called molecular vibration. This is a picture right now. Here's a nitrogen molecule, oxygen molecule, and a carbon dioxide molecule. So we'll go to this next page, and we'll look at some vibrations. This is an animation, a simple animation of some molecular vibrations. I've gone to the Center for Atmospheric Research website, which has got some great resources for chemistry and atmospheric science, obviously. Now we'll go on to look at the relationship, interrelations between bond order, bond length, and bond energy. So here's three bonds, and each of the, in each case, the bond is between two carbon atoms. But the difference is the bond order. 
bond orders either one, two, or three as depicted by the single, double, or triple bonds between them. Look at the way that the average bond length depends on bond order. As bond order increases, the average bond length decreases. Let's also look at the way bond energy depends upon bond order. As bond order increases, bond energy increases. Let's look at this in another chemical system. Let's consider bonded carbon and oxygen atoms. Again, with either single, double, or triple bonds between them. As bond order increases, bond length decreases. As bond order increases here in the system of the carbon bonded to the oxygen, bond energy increases. So the same trend in bond order, bond energy, and bond length can be seen in a few different chemical systems. Again, it's seen here in the nitrogen, nitrogen bonding system. As bond order increases, what does bond length do? decreases. They get closer together. As bond order increases, obviously they're being held together by more chemical bonds and they're harder to break apart. So bond energy increases. And so here's another comparison of bonds. But in this case, we're comparing bonds between a carbon and a halogen, all which have single bonds between the carbon and the halogen. So here the bond lengths are not all the same. Bond length is increasing regularly as you go down this family of fluorine to iodine. And bond energy, bond energy is decreasing as you go down that family. That is the case because the atoms vary in size. The fluorine atom is smaller than the chlorine atom. And the fluorine atom is able to get a little closer to the carbon than is the chlorine. The shared electrons that are in the internuclear region get to be a little bit closer to the two nuclei, and hence the stabilization is a little bit greater. As bond order increases, what happens to the bond energy? And as bond order increases, what happens to the bond length? Give you a couple seconds to think about that. One, two. There's your answer. As bond order increases, the bond energy increases and the bond length decreases. In which of the following choices are the covalent bonding pairs correctly arranged according to increasing bond length? The shortest bond length at the beginning at the far left of this list and the longest bond length at the right. Give you a couple seconds again. Okay, we're again revisiting this issue of the size of the atoms affecting the bond. And so as you can see, the fluorine atom is the smallest in this series of halogens. And so it's able to get closer to the carbon and then it will have the shortest bond length. The answer is D. Thank you for watching and thank you for learning chemistry.